Okay, so briefly here, let's agree on a path. Uh, we're going to be doing this stuff on the left, test net, local net, beta net, like stuff that, that on the left hand side, we're not going to be digging into mainnet, except I'm going to try and get everybody to deploy a mainnet application in the next 24 hours, actually, that we can use to interact with each other. I've, I've just written something over the weekend that I think might be fun. I'll try and convince you that we should try and deploy it. Uh, and then maybe, you know, a third of, of people in the call will be able to, to, to do it. And uh, and other people might be incentivized to, to catch up because, uh, you know, we'll be able to, to share in this experience together. I'm not going to uh, reveal what it is until we're actually looking at it. Um, so we will be talking about contract literacy, not contract security, right? There's not a lot of stuff that we're, we're digging into with contract security, so just heads up. Um, uh, we, we could talk about NFTs and, and fungible tokens uh, and the standards that we have for that and examples that we have, but we're not going to be talking about like token economics. Some people really get into that sort of stuff and like how do we design this and there's all sorts of tools for modeling token economics and human behavior around that. Not going to touch it. Um, near core contracts we'll be talking about, but not sort of moonshot things like can we port Uniswap to near? Like if you gave me a week, I'm not sure if I could even estimate that. I'm not really sure. What that would take. Uh, but f feel free to ask these questions, uh, but you may not get the answer uh, here in this uh, in this experience. Okay, just, just heads up on that. And then cross-contract calls, ability to communicate from one contract to another. This is really NIR's scalability story. So as your contract is running, you might fire off three or four other calls to contracts, which then come back like asynchronous programming, promise-based programming in JavaScript, you can think of it. Um, and uh, it, it has some similar kind of feel to the code. It feels a little bit similar to that. Uh, but we're not going to be talking about the you know consensus model and sharding, compute, and storage, and, and, and sort of the, the protocol underneath at all. That's out of scope. Uh, and I'm not qualified to talk about it. Uh, yeah, so uh, Nikhil is asking, every function call gets 200 milliseconds. It, it gets 200 teragas, and uh, you know, one teragas is about one millisecond, more or less, on the wall clock. So the goal is we want to have the block ticking over once every second of clock time. And so uh, that means we have about uh, a thousand uh, milliseconds in that one second, depending on the block time, actually, it may grow, shrink a little bit, may increase a little bit. So 200 milliseconds, 200 teragas is good enough to allow a little bit of overhead for cross contract calls, and then a little bit more overhead for the communication around shards and you know, kind of the gossiping of the state of the network. So that's why 200 milliseconds is so small. All right, and we can we can dig into that if you like, yeah. And so we've got, you know, these meetings. I think it's 4 p.m. UTC we started today, right? So every single day starting at the same time. Today, 60 minutes, max 120 minutes. Uh, Friday, uh, 60 minutes as well. Um, every day, it's about 30 to 60 minutes. Depends on how many questions you've got. We've got synchronous activities. That's you know this kind of stuff, maybe talking about process or aha moments or whatever demos on Friday. And then lots of asynchronous activities, lots of work on your own. Again, as a junior dev, you should be budgeting six to 10 hours a day. And I'm not saying this like, oh, maybe I'll just put in an hour or two, and it'll be fine. It won't be fine. <laughs> it's a lot of work, so brace yourself. Okay, I'll just remind you. And if you don't have time to do it this week, that's fine. Try again in a couple of weeks, okay? Uh, so uh, demonstrations, what are those on Friday? This is what you need to build. So at the end of the week, I'm expecting from you contracts in Rust, assembly script, or both. Maybe you want to have contracts that are collaborating, unit tests for those, simulation tests, mockups only for the front end. They could be hand drawn or using balsamic or something, but don't implement the front end. Avoid that temptation if you can. And a documentation, of course, that looks like the stuff on the right hand side. You can barely read it, I'm sure, but these slides are available. The slide hasn't changed for all four of these presentations. And the idea here is that uh, this nearly neighbors, for example, is like a Kickstarter for your neighborhood projects. You might say, I want a coffee shop, you know, within a one mile radius of my house, and I'm willing to put $100 in as an early investor in that it gets locked up somewhere when the proposal hits its you know threshold for minimum you know capitalization then it automatically creates a project that manages the construction of that coffee shop let's say uh, and then you know when you show up in the coffee shop you get recognized because you know your account is registered there on the chain uh, for your free coffee you know a year's worth of free coffee or whatever that is right so this is the idea of this project and it's a complete project in that sense. There are some placeholders here and there, some some rough edges here or there, but this will give you a sense of sort of the scope of what we're expecting on Friday. Okay. There are other examples as well, three sample projects. Uh, and now I think uh, more than four demo projects, maybe almost 10 demo projects, like nine or 10 demo projects. So I need to update this slide actually. Um, let's make that nine demo projects 
And if you click on this link, it should open up the NCD um, filter here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine projects. These are these are demo projects. I think you can see that that okay, right? These are demo projects in the Learn Near organization. Here's the URL to see these demo projects. So if you want to see what other people have built, go for it. All right. So, and now there's actually, I think, four sample projects as well. Um, but uh, we can talk about that in a minute. Okay, so these are this this is this library will continue to grow. The way this works is when you give the demo at the end of the week, I ask you to submit your URL and then I fork it into uh, this um, uh, into this organization, so we can keep track of what you've produced for your demo, right? So you put it anywhere you want, and then we'll fork it in. You can see all of these ones on the right hand side are forked in here, and then the ones on the left I've written myself, or or with in collaboration with other people, right? Somehow. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good sense of the demos and the scope and where you can find these. It's going to be an intense week. Brace yourself. I'll say that again. Okay, so uh, what kind of changes, Hajar is asking, are we expected to do? Um, Hajar, I don't quite understand what you mean by changes you're expected to do. Um, uh, can you clarify that either verbally or in, in text? Can you explain what you mean? What kind of changes are we expected to do? Okay, so you're not speaking up, so I assume that you'll do it uh, by text, but I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean. If anybody else knows what uh, she means by this, please uh, let me know. Uh, and then Flex13 is saying to deploy a code, what should I do uh, on Ubuntu? Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about uh, deployment um, for sure. So no, no stress, we'll walk through the steps of all this stuff and, and help you with it. Uh, there's no rush, you don't need to do it right now. Okay, so defining success. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, so this course, L1, is what this week ends you. You finish the course with a demo. L1V is 60-minute code interview with me or any other qualified code reviewer. The team will grow to be able to do that. Maybe you want to be a code reviewer for future cohorts. We can have that conversation as well. But at a minimum, you would need to know enough to be able to make a judgment about whether someone's understood what it is they've done. So I'm the only one who's doing that right now. And maybe others internal to NIR will be invited to do that. But eventually, I would like to see some of the graduates of this program also help cover some of that as a peer review. Okay, so uh, sorry, just to cut off here, Hajar is, um, is, um, uh, is clarifying additions to the contract. So what kind of changes are we expected to do in terms of additions to the contracts? Thanks, Hajar, for clarifying. So you're expected to write your own contracts from zero, from a blank file, actually. To write your own contract, set up your own project, deploy it, include unit tests, simulation tests, documentation, front end, the whole deal. If you've been to a boot camp, it's like a final project in the boot camp. But I don't need the front end. I would prefer designs, unit tests, simulation tests, a working contract on technology that you're maybe only seeing for the first time today. It's not going to be an easy week. I'll say that again. It's a lot of work this week. It's going to be intense. Okay. I, I believe if you're committed to it, you can do it. That's no problem. Okay. And level two and level three are basically, you know, these numbers. I'm not really sure. We're still figuring out exactly what constitutes level two or level three in terms of the size of your applications. Maybe some of you will have mainnet applications in a week or two. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, but for now, this is kind of the notional idea. And if you're curious about sort of the sketch for what these uh, courses, uh, this level uh, compares to the next two levels of courses, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, and for the time being, all these courses are either free or paid. Eventually in the future, we might charge for these things. It depends on, uh, on what we decide to do with this. All right. So um, then what? What can you do after this? People always ask, what after, what what can I do next? So you can check out near.academy. You can do that today if you want. In fact, you don't need to wait. Near.academy is a URL. It's a very simple eight chapter walkthrough. You can take a look at the code, read some stuff, and it will walk you through the meme museum actually, which is uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the, the middle project here, sample meme museum. That's near Academy, the code behind that. Figment Learn Pathway, uh, you get paid something about 20 bucks to spend 30 to 60 minutes learning about near code. Uh, the Bounties Program, you can earn more money solving our problems. The Grants Program, you can earn money so solving your own problems of your own design. And the Open Web Collective, you can join startups that are, are building uh, you know, uh, businesses there. So this is what you could do next in terms of near.